Hey, what's up, Power Appers? I got a cool video for you here today. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a tree control with Power Apps. Let's get started. We've seen the tree control scenario pop up many times as we built Power Apps over the last few years, and really we've come up with a few different ways to implement tree controls. So what I'd like to do in this video is walk you through the different ways that I've figured out you can implement a tree control in Power Apps and show you how it's done so you can learn how to do that yourself. Perhaps you're wondering, what is a tree control? Many people who are citizen devs may not come from a hardcore dev background and don't really refer to what we're building here as a tree control. So let me show you and then we'll talk about how to build them. Essentially a tree control is a way to represent data on your screen and interact with it. Data that's in a hierarchical fashion, kind of like a tree, has branches. So you can see here in this first example I have a tree. This is the parent node and then these are all child nodes to this parent. This is my second parent node in the tree, and it has child nodes. So you could kind of think of that as branches on a tree. Another way to look at the tree control is here, and I'm sure you've seen this before, and I'm sure you've seen expand collapse functionality in a tree control like that before, even if you didn't know it was called a tree control. So that's what a tree control looks like and what it does. And let's talk about the different ways to build them now. The first approach we can take is using the nested flexible height gallery controls. So that's what I'm demonstrating right here. In this approach, we're using two nested galleries, which correspond to the parent and child node levels in the tree view. So as you can see here, I've got my parent gallery and that contains everything. And I've also got the child gallery. It's a gallery within the gallery. In this approach, the parent gallery must be a flexible height gallery, and the child gallery is a fixed height gallery. You may be wondering at this point, flexible height gallery, fixed height gallery, what's this guy talking about? Well, let me show you. When you add a new gallery to a page in Power Apps or a screen, you come up to the Insert tab here and select Gallery. And inside here, you can see we have the flexible height galleries we can choose from. And these four that are not marked as flexible height, those are your fixed height galleries. I'm going to take you on a little tour here of the data sources in this app that I'm pulling this data you see in the tree view from before I show you how I actually built the tree view. So if I head over to the View section, and select data sources. Here you can see that I have connected to several different things inside of CDS. And I'm actually going to use this demo key results and demo objectives. These are the parent and child values of what I'm representing here inside of my tree control. So let me show you what that looks like. Here's the data that's actually in CDS. So this is my demo objectives right here. And this is my parent. I have two parent values. They each have an ID column and a title column. I've also got the child. That is this entity called the demo key results. As you'll see, I have an ID column, a title column here as well, but I also have a lookup column back up to the objective here. So we can see with that lookup column that I'm correlating those two columns right there. And what that also shows us is that for this particular item right here, 001, we can see that it has three different children associated with it. While on the other hand, if we look at item 002, or triple zero two, I should say, we can see here that 
it has five different child records associated with it. So that's how this data right here correlates to what you see right there. That's where that data is actually coming from. So now if we actually take a look at these gallery settings, we can start to learn a little bit more about how we built this. So at the top level, here's our parent gallery, and notice its items collection is the demo objectives. That's that CDS entity, the parent entity. And inside of that gallery, I'm just displaying a label here, and this label is displaying the ID and the title from that particular entity. Now within this gallery, you've also noticed I've added the child gallery right here. So the important things to point out about the child gallery, I like to start with the data source. First you can see here's my demo key results entity that I talked about before and I'm applying a filter to it. I'm saying that I only want you to show me items whose objective ID matches the one associated with the parent gallery. And that's how I pull the child items out from demo key results. The other things to point out here are if we look at template size, this is 35 I've used to fix how big I want this to be. I've also used zero for my padding. Setting the padding to zero will help me avoid potential scroll bar issues inside this child gallery. Although you see this scroll bar appear here in preview mode during the editor, notice when you come here or when you play the app, it does disappear. So that's a really good thing to be aware of because sometimes when you select it, it'll pop in here and you may be trying forever to adjust these sizes only to find out it was working the whole time. The last really important piece of this one is how do you get this flexible height or this gallery inside here uh, to get the correct height so that as you can see this one has three items in it and this one has four but it's all nice and tight pushed up together so how do we do that how do we calculate this child gallery height you can see it right here we're going to count the rows of the different items that we have in that gallery and then we're going to multiply it by the template height so that's a very simple approach on how you can use two different gallery controls to do this. Now, a couple things I'd like to note about this approach. This only supports displaying items two levels deep, and all the items need to be the same fixed height. And don't forget what I said about the uh, design mode and that little scroll bar right here. Um, always go to preview here before you start changing your height settings. So that's approach one, which we like to call the nested flexible height gallery controls approach. The next approach uses a single gallery control. Here you can see this on this page. See, I have my gallery and I even called it single gallery here. It's the only thing on this page. It contains my entire tree view. Now some people might think this approach is easier because it's only one gallery. Some people might think it's harder because you have to put your data in a different state to support this. Let me show you what that data looks like. You can see it here on the left. This is the actual data that I have assembled in this collection called tree nodes right here. In this approach, we're adding three columns as you can see, path, level, and visible. These columns help us organize the nested items by sorting them by the path. As you can see here, it makes sense how we can sort these things with this path. Then we can calculate the indent level. You see, notice I have this top level and then I've indented it down and I can calculate that indent level there with the level column. Then I can also use this visible column here to give me the ability to implement expand and collapse functionality like this. I didn't have that functionality in the first tree view. You could put it in there too. I just decided to demonstrate it in the second one. So as you can see, we have a different data source that we have to create in order to pull this off in a single tree uh, control with one gallery. 
doesn't matter where you store this data. You can store it directly in the data source where your tree data comes from. Maybe like a view in SQL Server or an entity in CDS like I've done. Or you can query the data for your tree from one place and the data for the path and level in another and then merge them into a single collection right inside the Power App. That's up to you to decide what works best for your scenario. I just wanted to point out though that as long as you get the data into that collection before you bind it to the gallery to make your tree, with this approach it doesn't matter where the data originates from. So if we take a look at this control, we can learn a little bit more about how it's built as well. Let's start by taking a look at the gallery control itself. So here's the gallery control and notice it's set to the items to be tree nodes collection. It's the one I talked about before that has the data in it that looks just like this. So how did we build that collection? Well, if you'll notice, when we come to this page right here, on visible in this page, I'm actually selecting this BTN load tree view button. That's this guy. So it's the same as clicking the button when we come to the page. Here's what happens to build this data up. The first thing we do is we actually create a new collection called Demo Key Results Extended. And then we're going to add some columns to this collection. We're going to add the columns from the Demo Key Results data source. That's our CDS entity. And we're going to add the parent ID and the objectives ID. Then what I'm going to do is clear out that tree nodes collection so that my gallery control will have a fresh set of data when I'm finished with the next steps. After that, I loop through everything in the demo objectives entity and I pull it back and I put it in the tree nodes collection. Notice we're in a for all here. We're also going to be looping through the collection we created at the top and evaluating if its parent is the same one as in the demo objectives collection. This helps us set the path in the parent-child relationship and all the other metadata, as you can see right down here. Once we're done with that, we're going to create a new collection out of tree nodes again, and we are going to do that by sorting it based on the path in an ascending fashion. You can change this up any way you want. You can also build in logic to make things hidden or visible right off the bat and pull in more data than just the title and the ID too, but as you can see in this simple example, it's the minimal data I need to implement this. And so, after that's loaded up and this gallery control is simply bound to that collection, it appears with everything we want. Now let's dig in a little and look at how we got the data up here now. The first one is this image placeholder image and this is the one right here this basically checks to see which nodes you just clicked and then what it's going to do is it's going to update the node in the tree nodes collection that's equal to the one you just clicked and it's going to set its visible property to the opposite of what it currently is and that's really all we have to do to facilitate that so that we can expand and collapse. As you can see, if you look at the data inside of the gallery, uh, that visible property uh, is used to define if it shows up or not. The other data inside of this gallery is the same as we saw before, just using this item's ID and title columns to display them. So what about the indent? How did we indent things there and reflect the different levels in the tree? If we actually go to the image placeholder here, we can see that its X coordinate is set to this formula of this item's level times 50 pixels. Remember the level is one of the metadata columns back here. So if it's zero times 50, it's zero and it's our top level node. If it's one, it's gonna be indented one times 50 or 50 pixels in this case, right to here. And as you can see, uh, because our label behind it 
is set to the x coordinate of the image plus the image's width plus tack on another 20. That's how everything in this whole row moves out to the right, just how we want it to. Okay, so that sums up our first and second approach, but what about our third approach? Our third approach is actually creating a custom Power Apps PCF control. You would do that by writing it with TypeScript. In that approach, your PCF control will need to read the data from the data source and then render the tree control. When you take that approach, things to note. You can support displaying items more than two levels deep there. In this approach with the PCF control, you have complete control of everything and you can create the tree to look however you like. But you must keep in mind how much data you load and the depth of your tree to ensure it does perform well. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it helpful. Would you like to work together sometime? I work with folks we meet on YouTube all the time. Hit me up at canvas.com. And if you'd like to see more cool Power Apps videos, check them out here on my YouTube channel. Thanks. I'll see you next time.